Have you been waiting for Toyota to unveil the Land Cruiser 300 series? Or what about their first dedicated fully electric vehicle? Well, you won't have to wait much longer. Finally, we know when Toyota will be unveiling both of these super anticipated vehicles. Over at Japanese scoop site Best Car Web, Toyota announces the end of orders. The new Land Cruiser will be announced in May. The future for the longest domestically produced car. Well, it's been in production since the 50, early 50s, like 51, the Land Cruiser has. Uh, so Toyota announces the end of orders. That's in regarding to the 200 series Land Cruiser, and it will be announced in May. So Land Cruiser orders, meaning the 200 series orders, ended in January. However, due to the long delivery time, the last vehicle ordered will be produced in late March. In that case, the new Land Cruiser will start full-scale production around May. And their source has not heard from the manufacturer about the outline of the new Land Cruiser or the release schedule, but probably around mid-April, the grade composition or the packaging and price will be known uh, around mid-April. And that's also when pre-orders will start. So there you have it, mid-April for the announcement of the Land Cruiser 300. Finally, guys, we're like, what? It's it's a month away at this point. We're also a month away from another big unveil, which is the EV. Before we get into that, I want to talk about, real quick, just get us up to speed uh, based off the spreadsheet of what's going into the powertrains for this new Land Cruiser. Now, this is what we've heard so far, that there's going to be a new TNJ clean diesel, a 3.3 liter. I'm expecting around 250 horsepower and 460 or so pound-feet of torque. They don't. They could also hybridize that diesel engine, and then you know, almost 300 horsepower and then almost 550 pound-feet of torque. Again, these are just my estimations. The four-liter one GR. I think that's what it is. The one GR four-liter V6 that we see in the Forerunner that could also be coming for the Middle Eastern markets as well in the Land Cruiser 300. That's kind of like the base engine for most markets. The V8, the 5.7 liter V8 is getting replaced by the 3.4 liter V35A FTS, which should be around 400 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. Those are my estimations. It's a slightly different tune from the engine we see in the LS500. And then we know that they're going to hybridize that twin turbo V6 based off so many reports. Again, just my guesses are around 430 horsepower, could be more, and then 550 pound feet of torque or somewhere around there. And more than likely a 10 speed automatic, even though some reports are saying a six speed automatic, I just don't see that happening with the requirements for fuel economy nowadays and emissions as well. And guys, if you enjoy content based on Japanese green autos, make sure to smash the like button, especially for the Land Cruiser and this EV we were talking about today, and subscribe for more news updates, more car reviews, heading to Sebring this weekend to bring you guys some hands-on Lexus coverage. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss that. And let's get back into the news. Feel free to pause if you wanna look at this spreadsheet a little bit longer, but I'm gonna segue over to Toyota's first electric vehicle. We have some sort of information on it, finally. Uh, this is over the Toyota European Newsroom, preview of Toyota's all new battery electric SUV confirmed for the 2021 Shanghai Motor Show. And the fact that they're unveiling it for the Shanghai Motor Show, and it's coming to us from the Toyota Europe page, I don't expect this EV coming to the United States uh, this year. Definitely not this year. Maybe by the end of next year where this vehicle is quite possibly coming uh, to Europe and China by the end of this year. Time will tell though. So what do we have? Toyota confirmed that we'll preview its mid-sized battery electric SUV at the forthcoming 2021 Shanghai Motor Show. Well, when is the Shanghai Motor Show? Well, we don't have to wait too long. The Motor Show will take place from April 21st to the 28th. So we're gonna have a Land Cruiser, it feels like, and then we're gonna have this electric vehicle unveiled around the same time or slightly after. The press days are on April 19th and 20th, and that's when I expect that this vehicle will be unveiled and then it'll be available for the public to check out on the 21st to the 28th. Now, this is the first vehicle we will ever see on the ETNJ platform for Toyota. Uh, it should be almost identical to the Subaru Evoltis concept, or it's probably what they're going to call the vehicle anyways. 
But Subaru and Toyota have made this platform together, joint platform called ETNGA. It's fully electrified. It's their skateboard, skateboard platform. It can be front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, different motor combinations. And heading over to Blue Nexus, this is made up of Aishin and Denso, which Toyota owns pretty much both of those companies. So Blue Nexus will be making e-axles, which are your traditional electric motors that we see in just about any electric vehicle out there. Uh, this two type or type 2b will be seen as a an e-axle and a lot of hybrids as well to power the rear wheels the 2a is a very very common motor which we see i believe in the the lexus ux 300 and they have lots of other things coming down the hatch including hybrid uh motors and transmissions as well so over at the ev capacities and power uh spreadsheet that i have for you guys this is more likely what we're going to see. Now, this small SUV or compact, which is technically a RAV4 is compact, and they're saying it's going to be a RAV4 size. I'm expecting uh, this sort of motor com combination, 201 horsepower in the front and then 107 in the rear for around 308 horsepower. And ironically, that's also really close to uh, the Ionic and then the Kia EV6, which we'll talk about later in this video, actually. And the top Ionic 5.6 and EV6 is going to have around 302 horsepower. So very competitive there. Around the 300 horsepower range is what I'm expecting uh, for this RAV4 sized EV that we should have an unveil about a month from now. There's also talks that Lexus has an RZ 450E. I should probably replace 350 here. <laughs> it's 450E, and that should be really the same vehicle, same platform, a little bit nicer interior, definitely the spindle grill. Uh, we should have more information on that as well in the coming month, maybe month or two. And it's possible that Toyota slash Lexus could unveil the Lexus vision for the electrified future uh, at the Shanghai Motor Show as well. Because to be honest, the Lexus future has a better future in China than it does here in the United States in terms of growth. It's kind of stagnated here in the United States. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some big Lexus news at the Shanghai Motor Show alongside this first ever Toyota uh, ETNGA vehicle. I got a few more news pieces for you guys before I let you go. A 21 Lexus LS500H is $10,500 higher than the 2020 model. And the reason is, is that their packaging the vehicle they're not really gonna have a, va a base model they're just gonna have like a luxury model and above and the reason is is more likely they've done the research they know exactly which ls 500 models are selling or should i say lexus 500h models a hybrid they know which packaging is the most common so they're just since they don't sell hard, hardly any of them anyways they're pretty much offering uh, probably just two flavors a luxury grade and then a, an ultra luxury grade so now the vehicle is about ninety five thousand dollars um, and then you're going to be seeing ultra luxury options, which is going to have like Carico glass and the hand folded pleats, things like that. So just felt like sharing that big price jump for a vehicle that is completely irrelevant. No one buys the, the hybrid version. It's not as powerful as the twin turbo V6 and really no one's buying the LS in general, uh, compared to previous generations. It's kind of sad to see the demise. I've made lots of videos on it. I don't, I don't want to get emotional about it right now over at the Kia media page. I want to hit on this. This is their first ever fully electric vehicle. We have the first, uh, I guess, pictures of the exterior interior, and I actually like it better than the Ionic five. Ionic five is a little bit more blocky, more retro looking. This is definitely a sleeker looking vehicle. And we're just going to flip through the pictures. This kind of reminds me of the IS, the new IS, just a little bit, and how the rear tail lights. Not only is it a light bar across like the new IS, but it flows down into the body line down here. And it's not nearly as elegant looking as the new IS, but I think this is going to be a very successful vehicle for Kia. And to me, it's more, I think it'll be more interesting. I expect it to slot below the Ionic in terms of pricing. I don't think it's going to be quite as luxurious as the Ionic model, at least from what we've seen. Um, here's the interior. And let's just zoom in. We have a rotary dialed gear selector or drive selection. You know, it doesn't really have a regular transmission. Here are your buttons for heated and ventilated seats. I think I can zoom in more. Heck yeah, here we go. Parking sensors, parking camera, uh, and these buttons are haptic feedback. So more than likely they're gonna beep at you or they might uh, show, uh, vibrate or something. They say it's haptic feedback climate control buttons. So 
It's either they're gonna buzz or vibrate a bit or give you a beep sound. So not real buttons here uh, for this vehicle, for the climate control anyways. This could be some ambient lighting here, these orange accents. And then we have the traditional, what I call the traditional anyways, double screen setup that we see in a ton of Hyundai products. Uh, so you have a 12 inch screen here, more than likely, and then a 12 inch screen here. They, it could be a 10 and a 10 inch screen as well. Both of them are going to be just fine for most people. I like the steering wheel. I like the black and the white contrast there. And this, the buttons on here are par for course for a lot of Kias at this point. Meridian sound system. And then if we look at these handles, L-shaped, almost Lexus-like in some regard, but uh, yeah, definitely not your, your traditional uh, handle there. And the dash here, it looks like it's some sort of vinyl. It could be soft touch. It's hard to tell from obviously a 2D image, the texture of, of this pattern here, but to me, it looks like a vinyl covering. And this interior, it's very simple. To me, it does not that does not look that pricey, which would be a good thing to keep the pricing down so people are more than likely to adopt uh, this new EV from Kia. And overall, I just I, I like the design of it. What do you guys think? Do you like the design of this over the Ionic 5? Which one would you pick? I, I'm interested to know which one you would like better. Nissan Rogue to add a 1.5 liter turbo three cylinder engine here in the United States or better miles per gallon. Uh, should be able to get 33 miles per gallon in the front wheel drive model. And they say it's a part of a small pilot program. I don't know, that sounds like beta testing to me, which a lot of these companies do anyways. They just force it on the consumer. Uh, you're kind of beta testing any new car anyways. Uh, but small pilot program for this 1.5 uh, liter three cylinder turbo should give you better miles per gallon than the two liter naturally aspirated that we see in it should give you better low end torque. I don't expect the power, peak horsepower to be a whole lot different. Now, all we know is that it's a 2021 Rogue, so it's gonna be coming sometime this year before the 2022 Rogue hits. So more than likely, uh, this, this engine long-term will replace the two liter naturally aspirated, and they're just going to be sampling it in this 2021 Rogue. And lastly, some motorcycle news, because I will be getting a motorcycle for the channel now that I'm living in paradise, sunny Florida all the time. Oh. Thank, thank you guys for making this happen. Thank you. Yamaha will be bringing back the YZF R7 confirmed in emissions documents, but it's not gonna be anything like the old YZF R7 that there was only 500 units. There's one currently on auction uh, <laughs> for $84,000, zero miles on it. Uh, there's lots of different ways Yamaha made that YZF R7, different racing kits they put on them, uh, but extremely limited volume, legendary, uh, automobile can I call it automobile motorcycle anyways so this new YZFR7 will be just a full fared version of the MT-07 what does that mean well it's a two-cylinder it's a parallel twin with around 70 or so horsepower and has about 49 pound-feet of torque not quite the same for high high revving four cylinder uh, that we had with over four of uh, with over 100 horsepower in the YZF R7 of yesteryear. Since it is just a full fared, more than likely a full fared version of the MT-07, uh, we're gonna be seeing very, very low pricing on here. Uh, definitely under the pricing of the Yamaha YZF R6 that was just killed. So, so sad. Last year, Yamaha killed the legendary R6. And guys, I'll leave it there. What do you think about today's news? Are you excited for the unveil of the Land Cruiser, the first ever EV? fully battery electric vehicle uh, based on a new battery electric platform ETNGA from Toyota. I'm super excited for both of them and also to see what Toyota, sorry, Lexus has up their sleeve because they will be unveiling some really big stuff uh, this coming spring, maybe at the Shanghai Motor Show alongside the Toyota counterpart. And guys, I'll leave it there. If you made it this far in the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more Japanese Korean auto news. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and peace out.